Hey everyone, it's Desiree and we are back. I believe this is installment four. We had a three and a three A, so I figured I would separate those. Again, I'm going to try to keep this down in length, but I get Gabby. I want to make sure you see everything. So just this will be a long video. I just know it. So we're going to continue on our journal here. And you can see, I mean, this one's curved. So as you keep using it, it breaks in um, and so forth. This one here, you know, it looks new. It's, you know, got nice crisp creases. Um, that'll change. Just, you know, go with it and just let it go. So what we're going to focus on, we again, we've chosen our papers. We've put them in the order. We've stamped them. We've added lace. We've sewn. Do we have to do all of that? Absolutely not. If you just want to sew, meaning stamp, I mean, then just do that. If you want to sew and if you have access to a sewing machine, you can do that. Um, but you don't have to. Um, again, it's, it's what you want to do. You can add lace either by sewing it or you can glue the lace in place. So again, glues and fabrics, you can do anything. Um, that you want to do. So if you don't have this, you know, that's fine. Again, these are just things that I usually do. I'll always try to show you alternatives um, to make it either easier for you so that you can jump in um, or just see what's going on. And just because once you do all of that, because it's easier to manipulate, again, if you are sewing, then you can sew in your signature, which of course is what you have here and then we have our center and we chose to put one of these in and this is what we're going to actually focus on for our video is this corner or center pocket thing that we have here now this is definitely coffee stained now you do not have to put this in here because this is your center here's my two little tails they'll be hidden because we're going to make this a pocket you don't have to do that for your center. Um, these are the styles that I made before. And again, these will be coming. I mean, this is just very white. I used white paper. I used cardstock, fabric, and so forth. So these are actually available in my shop here. So if I can find the center, oh my God, where's my center? Okay, so if I get to the center, Okay, so we're at the center. So what I did on this one is I kept my threads long. I kept them the length. I made sure that they stuck out the bottom. Let me put my hand up here. Stuck out the bottom of my book. And then I have a hand punch that gives me these little tiny hearts. And then I just glued them on each side. One side has some pattern paper and the other side has the craft cardstock. So they're not bookmarks. It's just something so that when this is closed, you have a little bit of decoration, um, a little dangle coming off the base of your book. Again, it's, it's another option um, that you can do. So you don't have to make the pocket um, if you don't choose, and especially if you forget to put it in prior to sewing, because yeah, mm -hmm. please, I'm just letting you know what I used to do. Yes. So you can see in this one, we have our pocket here. We can fit a card. We will be doing the card as well. We have a band. I'm going to show you how we did the band. Even after it's already there, it is thread through there. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, as we move along. So let's get started. So you're going to need your journal in front of you. I'm actually pulling some stuff out here. I like to grab some black card stock. Um, yes, believe it or not, I had no scraps. Um, I've already cut down some of my pieces that I'm going to need for this. So this is my piece of craft. This is four and a half by four and a half. I have two craft tags. Um, now I actually have a hand punch for that um, and that looks like this so it actually punches out the first you know just the one side and I just glue them together um, I have all of my papers 
from when I created my cover and also when I cut these down, I do save those scraps. Here's the scraps from the paper bag. I grabbed some coffee stained um, tags that I have. Here's a cut off from another sheet. Um, this is coffee stained as well. It's a time card, another large tag. Here are the scraps for those, um, the scraps from the other pages and the tracing paper. So I keep them together as I'm making a journal because it helps with the color scheme. Now that doesn't mean that we cannot go off into any other papers because you're gonna see that once I go to here. Um, I'm gonna pull in some other pattern papers, which is absolutely fine, but to just have the main, and plus this will also show me what other colors are in this paper that I can pull in, just like when I pulled in this fabric here you can see, you know, this color is kind of sitting throughout this. So that's why I pulled out that piece of fabric. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know down there if it doesn't, and I'll try to explain it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna set these up above me so you'll always see my hands coming across there obnoxiously. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to trim down this piece of paper and what I'm real quick going to do is I'm going to fold it in half because I just want to get an idea yeah that's perfect all right so I want to keep it this length so I want to look okay do I just want to cut across here to get that different texture do I want her face on this um you know how do I want to cut that paper it doesn't have to be exact but you kind of just want an idea of how you want that to look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my cutter in and I know I want this to be oh what do I want this to be? I'm gonna make it an inch and a quarter actually and that's perfect yes that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to cut that down and I'm still going to keep this and I'm going to set that aside. That'll help with some other accents that I may pull in or anything like that. Okay, oh, make sure I have my glue. Need my glue. Oh, we must have our inks because we have so many. And yes, of course, that is my phone. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. All right. So now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take this and I like to have, you know, just an accent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this. I'm going to use my, again, I like the Beacon 3-in-1 or the Beacon Fabri-Tac. Um, I, I think they're the same. I'm sure somebody's somebody will say, no, they're different and all this, but... I find them to work the same. It's it's very odd, I know, but um, could be the way that I'm using it, or maybe I'm not using them right. Anything's possible. So I'm gonna pull down just a scratch because I, I don't like getting anything on my thing, on my craft mat. And I do love this craft mat because I do like gray. Um, and I was fortunate. It is by um, Arteza. Um, they had actually sent it to me, and it's a very nice, um, it's a nice cutting mat. I did cut something on it, um, but I really, I just use it for, <laughs> I use it for my filming. So I don't want to cut too much. The one that's actually, there's another one that sits underneath this, actually. Um, I use that for cutting. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all a process. Can you tell? So I'm gonna line this up with the edge and I'm just going to, you know, just try to make sure that this is even um, because I want the black along the bottom. I'm gonna rub that across and my favorite tool is my Spellbinders tool-in-one. Um, I like to roll over these pieces, especially when they're large, like the cover or this strip. What I find is, 
by using this. Now you can use a regular brayer. I mean, you don't have to have this one. I just like it because I think it's it's comfortable and I've got two ends that are actually with me. Um, you can use a regular brayer. Um, you can use, you know, your paper creasers. I mean, you can take this and, you know, go down. I just don't like that noise. Um, but I find it just flattens out the glue. Okay, that was a lot to say about that. All right. I do find always keep my cap on and it does have an odor to it because of the alcohol base. So just a heads up, if you're very sensitive to smells, um, you may not want to look at that. Um, but it, it is a very good glue. Okay. Enough of that. So I'm going to come in now and I'm going to trim evenly along this strip here because I only want the black at the bottom. So I'm just going to trim that up. And pray I keep this straight. But if I don't, it's okay. Um, again, it's it's a junk journal. It, it's not. It's absolutely will be a masterpiece. Um, but again, it just doesn't have to have that level of preciseness. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm just gonna come in and trim this up on the edge. Get that close, because I really don't want the black to be seen, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm going to come in. I'm going to trim up this side. And I'm just going to trim this up, because I see some black. You'll be seeing me inking a lot, so I apologize, but now I'm just going to come in, I'm going to come in, I am going to go over the black, but I just want to make sure, I'm actually coming in a little flatter, I actually want to make sure that I do get some of my vintage photo, and again, you can use any color that you're looking for up along here, because I probably should have, again, I always forget to ink, you know, try to remember the inking of your pieces before you glue them together. Now, as I'm saying that, I'm going to ink this now before I forget because it's just going to happen. Whether I put another piece of cardstock on top um, or if I keep it like this, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I just always forget something. And you want to make sure that you get those edges on there. And I'm also going to do my two little tags. Those I just do one side because I do glue these together. And by the end of this video, I will have this finger brown. Yes. Okay, so we have this. Now, what you want to do is you need to make sure you need to know, you want to know this size, okay? And this is actually measuring probably about an inch and three eighths, okay? So what I'm actually going to do is in your signature, you have an opening here, you have an opening here, here, here. It's the space between where you sewed. So what I do is I take this and I'll line it up. Now I already know Okay, this is just a little bit too wide, and this one is, because these are actually, one of these is actually an inch and three-eighths, so that's fine. What I can do is I'm going to pull in my paper trimmer, and I'm going to trim it. That's the beauty of what we do. So I'm going to take off that. And I'm going to make sure that it's as straight as possible, keeping my fingers down. And, of course, it shifted. It's okay. It's all right. Awkward pause. It's the only thing that I do not like about this trimmer. I cannot, and that's sometimes why, if you've seen some of my videos before, I use a... Um, a post-it. I just didn't grab one. <laughs> yes. 
So with what's left, I'm just going to come in with some vintage photo. And then that took care of some of the black that I had up on top. And now we're ready. So now if I take this and line this up here, this sh should work. Okay, it should. Now, I can put this in two different areas. I could either thread it down here. And again, I'm just going to pick this up a little bit and thread it. All right, so if I want, I could have this down here and I could actually create a pocket if I want. And that's just by gluing along this bottom here and along this top. But I'm actually, I'm going to do something else with this. So the decision is yours. If you want to make it a pocket, make it a pocket. If you want it to be a belly band, then you would put it, I would put it up in this one or up in this one so that things can come down or even up here. I'm actually going to put mine down here for this one. So again, I'm just threading through the signature. Now, it doesn't matter. Remember, I used wax thread for mine. And that's fine. Um, that's just what I prefer. But you can use a cotton. You can use whatever it is you're looking for. Know that if you use a D, the DMC 6 strand floss, which is very wonderful to use because you can fray the ends as it comes down and all that. You can really have some fun with that. Just know that by doing this, if you do this on a regular basis, you will weaken those threads. Okay, this here, since I'm using the wax, I'm not weakening them. Again, I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. And we're going to start gluing. Now, before I glue, what I want to do is I want to open this. I want to make sure this is straight. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to put glue on the edge of these tabs. The one thing that's bad about these glues is when you use it, even when you have like a third of it left, oh, it takes forever to get down to the bottom. And I can't find my little gadget that someone gave me. It's an awesome gadget. So I'm just going to fold that over. Ah. But first, making sure I put a bead of glue just along the bottom. Doesn't have to be big. The nice thing about this glue, too, is if it does get anywhere, you can, like, roll it up. You can have fun rolling. And I'm going to fold that over and make sure that it is even. I'm going to crease that. And again, I will come in with this because the one thing I will say with the cardstock that I used... Um, it's very thick because um, it's actually car bases um, that I had. I keep saying, um, um, so it, there we go. So all of that moisture in there really made it, you know, buckle and, and all of that, which is fine. I mean, I don't have that problem, but just to make sure you want to make sure that you do keep that pressed down, you know, if you're that card maker and, and everything else, you know, pull out those acrylic blocks, get your weights going on there, keep your books by you. Um, but that's another reason why I come in with this to just enforce that down into each other. And now I'm just going to fold this over and I'm just going to make sure that it's even. And the reason why I'm worried about if it's even or not, because you will see this on the other side when you flip it. All right, now, it's a lot of paper here. I'm going to slowly push it over, and I'm just going to push that down, which is fine. All right, so now we have a pocket. We created a pocket. We created a tuck, whatever it is you want to call it. So, 
Now what I want to do is I'm going to put a thin or just a bead of glue going up and down on each side. Now again, you can just do it on the bottom. You can just do it on the top. Whatever it is you're looking to do, you can do it. And I'm going to bring this up together. Now, this is where my clamps, they don't have... Now, you can use bulldog clips. I just happen to have these. Um, they're nice and wide. I pull this up, and I squeeze her together. I start at the bottom... And then I come up and then these will hold this together so again I come to the bottom they're on the edge so that this is pressed together and then I come up with a second one to press that together as well I look down to make sure that they're pushed together and I just let that dry um, I'll let that sit for a couple of minutes this will it's it's just a lot of moisture when it comes to this heavyweight cardstock and that's fine I, I again i don't have that problem but it will take a little bit for this to adhere and i just like to make sure so i put a little bit more normal amount of glue on that um and then i just keep that pressure there so I'm going to come back because I don't want you to hear me sit here and hold this. Um, so I'll be back once I know this is dry and secured. You'll still see my hand there. Okay, so my hand was close. I have a little tiny glass here holding this up. So I've already checked the one side. And I'm just going up, making sure... Because I did put... I wanted to make sure, while I say a thin bead, I do put a little bit more. I'm okay if it comes out. Because what I'll do is I'll clean it. And again, that's the beauty of that glue um, to be able to, to clean that up. Um, these here, as I throw it, I always throw something. Um, these are these are like um, these are like bulldog clips. Here's the difference. They're flat in here. Um, so they don't have any ridges that would go onto your papers. I mean, they can bend because your papers can expand, so you keep it close to the back but or to this tip, but they're just flat. Um, so they help flatten, you know, keep something glued together. I get these at Dick, Dick Blick's. Um, I think I got like a whole container full of them. So these, and this is to me a, a good size. I didn't get them any smaller. I think they work. They're very strong. So, all right. So I think we are good with that. So now we have our pocket. So we have a side pocket going in this way and we have a top pocket going this way and we have it for both sides, which is great. And again, this will go right up to the edge. And again, from edge to edge, because all we did was glue the bottom of this. So we have a nice little tiny pocket or a tuck there where uh, journaling cards or photo cards can be placed. And then, of course, we have this here. So this one's a little bit larger. And you can see that one's going to go in there like that. Now, the wonderful thing when it comes to this one is it's going to create this tag that comes out of it so you can make it different sizes if you want um, you could keep it inside you know this will actually be on the inside just inside the cover you could make this card instead of going you know keeping this four and a half because that's the width of this but you could have added another inch or so so that it actually sat here and then this tab would sit out onto the edge and you know what I think that's what I want to do so I need to add another half inch to this so instead of and you know what I'm just gonna eyeball it here because I don't want to pull out my um, cutter again I'm just gonna take this I'm gonna trim it along to see that's what you can do 
I'll save this though. We don't throw those pieces away. So if I put this in here, yeah, that'll be nice. I, I will really, really like that. So I'm going to re-ink around this. And you get to hear that awesome, wonderful sound um, when I ink. And then, okay, so now we did that. So you could just leave this the way that it is, and you can just set that in there. I mean, again, nothing major, um, nothing more to add um, or anything like that, and you're fine. So I do like to put um, pattern paper or a paper on here, but again, it is the pattern paper that I like. Yes, I'm walking away. Hold on, I'm coming. Um, and it all depends on what you want to to use. Um, so knowing that I have my colors here, while I've got some peaches and I've got some blues, they're muted colors. Um, they're not bright colors. So I thought this one would be uh, perfect in a way. I've got some different textures. Like I love this one. So I'll pull that out. I think that one would be great to accent. Um, here's a great piece of wood. And I just changed my mind. Because again, you go with what you've got in your stash. There's probably just so much that's going on there. The beauty of this too is you can still write on it. Okay, because we're going to cut this down. Um, so that we can just add it in there. Now for my next piece, I am just going to look at, okay, let's have some type of decoration. Let's add some more details to the piece. Sorry, I keep walking away from the camera. So, you know, I have this one as well. And I think this one would be really pretty. It's still matching this. It still has the muted colors. It's not too bright. Like this is bright um, when it comes to that. Now this is this is light too, and would still, you know, keep that muted flow. Matter of fact, I think I am going to go with that one. All right. So there's my cardstock. Card so knowing that this piece is four and a half by five, I'm going to cut this, I'm calculating now, I'm going to cut that, let's try it, so four and a half, I'm going to cut it four and seven eighths, because I do like thin borders, I keep that too, um, and then what I'm going to do is, I think we said, what, five? Yes. So I need to have four and seven eighths. And yep, keep that too. So if I look at this onto this, this should fit perfectly. And it does. Again, I like a very thin border going around when I'm doing this. Um, when I'm putting these on there. So now we're going to do the other one. And I just need to remember what I did. So. I think that's what I did. <laughs> you know sometimes you just get on the roll. And you're not quite sure. But that's okay. So now I'm just going to take these. And I'm going to glue these onto my piece. I do want to glue these down first. Now, you can glue your tag down first if you want, but I do like the look of the tag um, coming out. I'm going to come in. 
Again, that just helps to flatten it. Um, I have never had this glue warp. Um, and I think because it is an alcohol-based, um, it will not. But you'll have bumpies. Um, someone had asked me um, in one of the comments, which I'm still going through, um, you know, can you use a hot glue gun or something like that? Um, you know, you can. Um, you can use a hot glue gun for this, but just know you've got to be really quick if you're looking for it to be flat. Um, I find um, glue guns are good for embellishments um, so that you can get them on there. Um, if you wait um, a short time, you, you get that ridge, that plastic that that just forms on there. But again, I'm not going to say to somebody, no, you can't, um, you know, give it a try. I just, I do not know if you would like the effect of it. Now this, I'm just going to put that down. I'm actually going to put that down here. So when I place this. I like to place it even with my cardstock, my pattern paper that I put down, and right at the point where it comes up. And then I'm gonna flip this around and do the same thing on the other side, but also add my glue to the top so that I can get these combined. And then that helps me match it up onto the other side of my piece. And I hope I glued this in the right place. Okay, so that is our card for right now. Now, we just need to add our, I'm going to use the word sentiment. <laughs> Let's say word. Let's say word. So I have, just trying to arrange some stuff here, get some room. So I've created these sheets, um, and it's just words, you know, just words that I would use. Um, they could be different. They could just be things that you would put you know, within a journal for, for whatever. Now these are, um, just general words. Now these, these are actually, um, I have this page and then I have this page, I think. Um, there's some repeated words on this. So it's actually three pages. I have one for just general. I have one um, for Halloween and I have one for Christmas. So they'll be posted soon. Um, and I'll actually put them in my Etsy shop as a digital download. So again, this is just something that I pulled off, you know, from my Word document, used one of the fonts, and then, you know, just typed it up. Again, just very general. So I like to use this, and I just print it down on copy paper. I don't worry about, um, cardstock for these. So the one word that I want here, I love the word create. So I'm just going to cut into this. And I'm going to cut that out. There's plenty of room to cut in between. And then, of course, I love inspire. So I'm going to cut that one out as well. There we go. So that's why, I mean, you can cut these in half and just come in the way that you would want to. And then I just keep them in a folder. Um, I do tend to use more words, you know, some words more than others. Yes, um, absolutely. I need my black paper here, so I'm going to bring this in. Um, but then that just means I reprint it. And then I have more of the other words. So I'm going to trim this down. I like to get it as close as I can. I am not worried if it's straight. I mean, I try to keep it straight, all right? Um, but I do like to back these onto cardstock. And I do like black to be my accent. While definitely craft um, and all of that, um, I do like black. Now, if I would leave 
These are trimmed closer because of what I'm putting them on or what I'm using them for. I do like to doodle around my words as well. Um, so I'll do that sometimes. So again, you've got so many options when you, when you create these. I'm just going to put this down onto some black cardstock and then I will trim around it. We ink these up and I purposely make sure I come up onto the white when I ink. And again, you do not have to ink. Um, I do just like the look um, of the browns whether it's vintage or potting soil. Get that out of my way. Okay, so now you just need to decide, okay, do you want to have this word on this side or whatever? So again, you, you have so many choices and you can just have a lot of fun putting these in. And I'm just going to put that right up to the top. I don't center it on this. I just want it up to the top. And again, here's the one that I created before or for the first one. Oops. So I do want that centered, but up. And then I'm going to set this one in place. Same thing. Got some great wiggle room here. Just make sure it's centered and then push down. And that's that. Now you could round your corners if you want. You could put a cutout in this if you want. There's just so many things that you could do. But if we pull our journal back in, and if I put that in there, we've got a nice pull out. It's interactive. They can put other things in here. We've got the decoration of the um, sewing. If we wanted to add, we can pull out some stencilings. These are my go-tos. So if I take this and say, you know what? All right, we're gonna take that. We're gonna set this here. Matter of fact, I can actually set it in the pocket if I wanted to. Eh, nah, I want to set that here. I'm going to hold down. And I'm just going to pounce. Whenever I do this, I just pounce just to get that difference. So now I've just got some texture going on there. I'm going to turn this around. Get some more ink. And again, not being perfect. Just letting it come because I know this is going to be a little darker than what the front is. And you can see. So now I just got this arch going on there and it just gives it some texture. I could take this and I can bring this down like this if I wanted to and say, okay, you know what? I just want that there. And there you go. We have some decoration. So we've created our inner pocket with the card that pulls out something very simple. You can make your own tags like this, but just using your pattern paper that you have using what we've already kept from before. We now have a center pocket and what's great is when we close this, we can see that tag that comes out of our journal just to give it some, um, some movement, some texture, some dimension. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Again, that's just focusing on our center pocket here um, and what we're creating. So for part five, we're going to get into just all kinds of embellishments. We're going to focus on cards, tags, um, and using and showing where you can get some of, if you don't have pattern paper, but you like the idea um, I will be showing some of the digital prints that I use um, and that I have fallen in love and we'll talk about those. So again, I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're finding it helpful and giving you some ideas for your junk journal. 
If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below and I will make sure that I get back to you as soon as I can. I know this is a long video, I'm sorry, but I wanna make sure that you see all the details um, that you can as I'm doing this. The products that I used, um, I will have linked below as long as I can find them. I don't know about those pattern papers, but we'll give it a shot. Um, but everything else will be linked down below. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy if you have beautiful weather, but always remember what's most important. You gotta be creative. Thanks.